uh, using using Windows to scaffold the Rails app. Normally, I use a Mac, so this will be this will be a bit of an adventure. Windows is better, anyways. You know, people keep telling me that. You know. All right. So, cool. Give it a few minutes and then we'll kind of fire away and see what happens. For those of you that are unfamiliar, uh, I'm Jared. I am a software engineer at John Deere, and we will be talking about scaffolding a web app. I mean, I think the slide gives it away, but you know, uh, we're going to actually build something today and hopefully host it on the internet, depending on how well this goes. Um, that part is not required for people to follow along, but I'm hoping setting up uh, Ruby isn't uh, too painful for, for most people to do. It'll be a bit of fun. I personally use Rails pretty much every day. Uh, that is something that I, I use in my day job. So I, I do enjoy scaffolding Rails web apps. It's a bit of fun. Um, and we're going to, yeah, it'll be, be pretty interesting. And this is meant to be relatively interactive, but, you know. Uh, so if you have anything, just by all means, fire away or uh, throw it into the, the John Deere workshop chat. I have that open on the side. So, yeah. Once again, I'll, I'll give it just a couple more minutes here. And I do apologize. My dog is here locked into this room with me. So it'll be relatively entertaining to see if he can figure his way out of the room. He hasn't figured out how to use door handles yet, but it's just a matter of time, really. So I'll give it another minute and then we'll get started. Actually, while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and add something to the chat. This is the, the Discord chat. I can also add it to the, uh, the Zoom chat here as well. Uh, in fact, that might actually be a great idea if anybody really wants to tag along and check that out. This is a, a very simple GitHub project. Uh, it is something that you can use as the basis for your own app uh, or, you know, just kind of get a general idea of how Rails works. But we are going to be using that to actually scaffold our, our Rails application today. Yeah, give it uh, another moment and then I think we'll be set. All right, so uh, my name is Jared. I am a software engineer at John Deere. I'm here uh, at uh, HackNC along with uh, Amelia, Amar, and Josh. If you haven't talked to any of us, I would definitely encourage you to. Uh, Amelia and uh, Amar are actually judges uh, here in the conference. So they, uh, and she just waved in the chat. So uh, by all means, do say hi to her. If you haven't introduced yourself to any of us on Discord, I would encourage you to. Uh, we're here to kind of help out. We actually have a challenge that, that we've put in front of uh, in front of all of you. If you go to the general announcements, you can kind of see a bit more about it. We're looking to see if anybody can build a, a farming simulation game. And this has nothing to do with a farming simulation game. This is a scaffolding a web app, but hopefully maybe you can take some of these skills and abilities. Maybe you can make a web-based game or something, um, but this is going to be a, a little bit more... Uh, and my dog scratched at the door. I'll just kind of leave him. But anyway, well, what we're going to do today uh, is we are going to start by, we're going to pick a topic on something. Uh, I kind of have a couple of ideas of, of things that we can build, but people can just kind of throw stuff into the chat if they'd like, if they have ideas uh, of a very simple app that I, I could build. Um, so we're going to set up a quick project. We're going to use an existing template, the same template I threw into the chat. Uh, and we're going to kind of scaffold a very simple CRUD application. We're going to try to maybe style it, make it look kind of nice. Uh, maybe add some icons and, and kind of just have a full-blown app on the internet, hopefully here at the end of the hour uh, for people to fiddle around with and, and kind of do, do some fun stuff with. So uh, yeah, with that, let's start by 
picking a topic. If anybody has any topic ideas, uh, by all means, throw them into the chat, just whatever you want. Um, I'm not entirely sure what we would build, but I, I have a, maybe we'll try to build like a simple like education app, something that like allows you to sign up for courses or, uh, you know, maybe lets a, a teacher kind of manage course content, something like that, something really simple, something that doesn't require, uh, yeah, something that doesn't necessarily require a whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of magic, something that can, we can very quickly scaffold here, uh, you know, creating a, maybe a, a you know, a real-time chat application is maybe outside the scope of what, uh, what we would work on. Um, so yeah, uh, once again, I work at uh, John Deere. This is the kind of stuff that we, we, we use a lot of, uh, a lot of different tools here at John Deere to, to scaffold applications. We have pretty much anything and everything under the rainbow in terms of technology, whether that's, you know, Python for doing, you know, data analysis, whether that's, um, you know, embedded software like C and C++ that runs on things like the Gem 4 display that you're seeing uh, in front of you now uh, to, you know, Java Spring that uh, kind of powers some of our larger, larger web applications to, uh, you know, react on the front end of uh, like John Deere Operation Center. Um, you know, the tool that I work on in particular is called Harvest Profit. Harvest Profit actually uses Ruby on Rails uh, as kind of its kind of background or back end. It's kind of like this API application uh, that allows us to serve a React front end and React native mobile apps that, that allow you to, to kind of interact with our services. And farm, Harvest Profit is farm business management software. So it's, it's kind of farm financial management software, something that makes farmers profitable. Uh, John Deere is pretty interesting uh, as a place to do computer science or anything related to computer science, because we actually employ more software engineers than we do mechanical engineers now at this point. Um, John Deere is a very large company. We have over 60,000 employees across the globe. I'm actually based out of Fargo, North Dakota. I'm not even actually in North Carolina, which is kind of interesting. Um, but uh, we're uh, based, uh, you know, we have uh, headquarters in Moline, Illinois. We have, uh, you know, offices in Urbandale, Iowa. We have offices in Pune, India. We have offices in Brazil. We have offices literally all over the world. Uh, and, and with that, I, th I think, um, you know, I'm done kind of ranting about John Deere. We'll kind of get into actually working on, on an app. So I think uh, because nobody really suggested a topic, I'm going to stick with that, my little education app idea, uh, and we'll kind of see where that goes. Um, so yeah, we're going to start by cloning a GitHub repo. So it's actually this, this GitHub repo that I had uh, shared in the chat earlier. Uh, it's a real simple repo. Uh, there's nothing, no real magic in here. Um, I've just kind of frantically committed some things last minute uh, to make sure all of this works. But if you want to, you can go ahead and click use this template and, and clone it to your own project. I'm actually just going to commit directly into this repo itself. Um, but you can go ahead and just use this as a template and you can actually go ahead and have this pushed into a different different org. Uh, it'll just kind of use that template. You can make it private, you can make it public, whatever you'd like to do uh, if you're trying to code along with me. But I'm going to go ahead and start. We're going to uh, just go ahead and I'm going to use, unfortunately, I've already got Ruby. I've already got Postgres set up. I've already got Git set up. Uh, I'm actually going to use uh, the Windows subsystem for Linux, which is kind of, this is my first time really kind of trying it out. So it'd be a little interesting, but we're going to go ahead and clone this repo. Uh, and so this, this repo, it's really, really simple. Uh, oops. And we'll go ahead and move into this repo and, uh, we're going to go ahead and run bundle install. So for those of you that, that are unaware, uh, maybe I should talk about which Ruby version we're using. Uh, we're using Ruby version 3.0.2. Uh, that's what's going to work if you're using this template. If you don't have Ruby installed, you can actually just go ahead and go to the you know Ruby website. Um, right, and they have a whole like very, very simple guide on installing the latest version of Ruby for anything that you might have, um, you know, whether you are uh, trying to, run it on Windows, whether you've got, you know, Mac OS, whether you've got Ubuntu or whatever it might be. Um, you know, our goal is to have uh, Ruby version 3.0.2. Uh, and is there a manifest that defines the required version? There is. So uh, in this, uh, if I actually go ahead and let's, let's go ahead and open this up in Visual Studio Code. Let's take a look here. Uh, so when you, you've installed Ruby in, in this particular project, if you go, there's something called a gem file. So Ruby uses gems. This is like, a, if you ever, use node like NPM, uh, Ruby uses a gem file, uh, right? This is actually Bundler, which comes with Ruby, the latest versions of Ruby anyway. And inside our gem file, we actually specify this Ruby version. So this particular project requires Ruby 3.0.2. If you do not have Ruby 3.0.2, you can still code along with me. Actually, it looks like that kind of froze up a little bit. Um, if you still have, if you have Ruby 3.0.2, 
Uh, that'll make it really easy for you to follow along. But if you don't, we can actually go ahead. If you have like a different version of Ruby, like let's say it's you know Ruby 2.7.2, .2, you can actually just do gem install rails, right? So whichever version of Ruby you have, gem is actually a, a, a Ruby like this is this is something that comes from Ruby. So gem, the command comes from after installing Ruby. You can just do gem install rails. And instead of using this particular project, we can actually just create a brand new rails project just by typing in um, rails version. So our rails new, and then you can put in a, the, the name of a project. So we could say like some test project, right? And then this will actually allow you to install and scaffold a Rails project from scratch, which this template has already done for me. Uh, this template is already a scaffolded Rails application using Rails uh, 7, which is not yet released, but is uh, really fun to use. So uh, yeah. Yep, Chaco install Ruby. That's an easy way on Windows. Otherwise, you can use the Windows subsystem for Linux. So you can just go to the Windows store and install Ubuntu. Um, that's what I did on this particular computer. Nice and easy. Um, if anybody has problems with it, throw it into the chat um, or just, you know, tag along for the ride. Um, but I, I promise you, once you get Ruby installed and Postgres installed, the rest of this kind of just goes pretty smoothly. Uh, so once again, having Postgres installed is also going to be pretty important. So if you if you can, like, you know, once again, just having Postgres installed, I think you can get that from uh, from Chocolaty or you can get that from a different package manager. You can also do, do it with uh, Docker, for instance. You could have uh, just use a, a Postgres Docker in container. Um, but we will need Postgres because we are going to be connecting to a database. We are going to be storing stuff. We're going to be creating things, reading things, updating things, and deleting things. We're going to be connecting to a database. This will be a full CRUD app by the time we're done. So I'm going to go ahead and run bundle install. And uh, I've already actually got all of the dependencies for this particular project. So uh, in here, we can actually go ahead and start running it. So once again, once you have Rails installed and you have uh, a database set up, we can actually go ahead and run Rails DB. Rails DB create might be the thing that we want to use. Uh, and this is actually going to create uh, a test database for us. So once again, Rails has its own like ORM. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's called Active Record. Uh, and it actually will manage and create all of the models in our database for us. So I can go ahead and Rails, you know, DB uh, setup, for instance. Um, and our database is already set up, already exists. We can actually go ahead and I'm going to use Table Plus here just to take a look at that database. Uh, there's not a lot in it. I can go ahead and open it. Uh, so we've got a couple of tables that were already created. And one of them, the most important one here is the schema migrations table. Rails kind of handles migrating things for us. It's, it's pretty slick. Um, so once again, I'm connected to a Postgres database here already. You don't need to have like table plus or anything installed to kind of tag along with this. Um, but we're going to go ahead and start. Let's, let's start making our, uh, I don't know, our education app, I guess. Um, so right now, we just have our fairly empty Rails project. There's really not a lot of magic in here. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and Rails uh, G, let's just generate a model. So once again, with uh, Rails, you get a whole bunch of commands. You can actually just go ahead and type in Rails help and you can kind of see what we have here. There's just a whole bunch of kind of built in commands that we can kind of start with. And one of the most important ones is this generate command. So you can generate some new code. And what does that mean? Well, Rails generate Rails is an MVC framework. It's much like uh, Django or uh, Laravel or uh, Sales.js, or if you're looking for maybe something Java, that'd be like Java Spring. Uh, it's a full-blown framework. Uh, it allows us to kind of create and write code that's already been formatted, already been created. And in this case, we've got a whole bunch of different things that we can generate using Rails. It doesn't require us writing that much code. Uh, we can kind of just scaffold a whole project. Uh, and that's basically what we're going to do today. We will write some Ruby. Uh, we'll definitely take a look at some. We'll definitely be working on some HTML and CSS. But what I really want to focus on today is just you know having something in the database that we can manipulate and work with. Uh, that's that's going to be pretty important. So when we're talking about Rails here, I, I do want to generate maybe something that we can use, um, you know, uh, maybe before we actually generate anything, we can kind of see what we have already. So if I type in Rails server, and once again, if I scroll up through all the commands that are in here, you can see like there's Rails, uh, you know, routes, there's restart, there's secret, there's runner, there's all these different commands that you can run, but server is a pretty important one. It's going to start the Rails server for us, right? So if I go ahead and I run Rails server, we'll actually have a, a very simple uh, running server here that we can take a look at. And it's running on, on our local host on, on port 3000 by default. So if I go ahead and I jump back into our website here, I go or into uh, uh, Firefox here, I can actually go ahead and we see that we're actually running 
Rails. Uh, and if I actually look at my logs here, uh, we've actually gone ahead and if I just go ahead and refresh, this should hopefully show some kind of logs. Um, but yeah, we've, we've got everything kind of up and running. It kind of works. Uh, the pieces are there. Uh, and you can actually see, yeah, we've got all of these different things that have come through. So it's actually gone ahead and rendered something, right? Granted, we didn't, like this isn't like some styled page that's already built into our Rails app. This is just kind of a very random page that's kind of default, just letting us know that Rails does work. So we can change that. We can actually write our own uh, web page if we want to. We don't have to use this, this Rails one. So let's let's go ahead and generate something. So we can Rails G, uh, and G is just short for generate. Uh, and we can generate a controller, right? So a controller in Rails, once again, it's an MVC framework. You have models, you have views, and you have controllers. Uh, so a model is something that represents a row in the database. So like if I go here to this, you know, active storage, rich, rich text, a single row would be one record in the database. That's a model. Uh, a controller is something that allows you to I don't know, manipulate models or somehow view them, format them for rendering. And then a view is like how you style that particular element. So you'll actually notice if we go into the app folder in Rails, we have a models folder, we have a views folder, and we have a controllers folder, right? MVC. Uh, there are other folders in there, but I just want to focus on those three. Those are really going to be the only three that we'll interact with today. So if I generate a controller, we can generate one here. And uh, we're going to generate a controller. We'll call it pages. And let's, uh, let's add a home page. Uh, so once again, the controller is going to be called pages, and then we're going to have a home action on the controller. Uh, and you'll actually kind of see what that looks like here. So if I go ahead and refresh this guy, or maybe this guy, maybe this will be a bit simpler. You can see now highlighted, we've got a pages controller with a little method on it called home. We've got a view here with a little home view, and it says pages home. Uh, and we've actually gone ahead and we've added in our routes, uh, or we haven't added anything to our routes yet. We don't necessarily know where it is, but we can actually go ahead and change this. This is kind of already commented out here. We can make our homepage pages home, right? And we can go ahead and run our Rails server here. So let's go ahead and run Rails server. Uh, it's up and running. If I go back and I refresh our homepage here, Hey, look at that. That's our content, right? Uh, it's nothing crazy. Obviously, we're not doing anything particularly fancy with our content, but we have a homepage and we can actually go ahead and edit some of this content. So if I just pin this guy here to the side, we can go in and edit some of our content. Yo. Hi, everybody. Let's do a little wavy emoji, right? Why not? And if we go ahead and refresh, bam, look at that. It's like magic, right? Uh, we actually have a homepage. We have stuff to show. Uh, now, there's nothing really that interesting going on here. We just have really kind of static HTML being rendered. Uh, but I want to point out that we are making full requests. You can actually see our processing is happening at controller home. We're rendering a layout. We're rendering a page. We've got a whole nice little log showing kind of what's going on and all the magic that's going on here. Um, and we can do some pretty cool things, um, you know, with with actual views. And we'll come back to that. I want to just uh, kind of start just by talking a little bit about the next stage of what we're going to demo today. So we'll kind of dive into. Uh, uh, I think we'll add these guys. I'm just going to go ahead and stage a couple of changes, and we'll go ahead and even add some tests. We don't need to sort any of those changes. So we'll go here, kill our little server, and then we will do a git m uh, add a home page. And we'll push that up. So now you guys can see our awesome, awesome, awesome home page, right? So cool. We added a home page. Look at us. We're cool. Um, right. Nice and simple. Nothing too crazy. Um, the next thing that we'll kind of dive into here is, is actually generating some um, more interesting, like something that's, that's maybe a bit more interesting. Let's talk a little bit about like uh, CRUD applications, right? CRUD is a great thing to shout out when things don't work as a software engineer, but CRUD also means create, read, update, and delete, right? So we can actually store things in the database. We can kind of manipulate them. Um, but we have to have something in the database for us to manipulate. So let, let's start by maybe adding a, 
uh, like a course, right? So inside of our database, we're gonna you know have a new a new table. We're gonna call that table courses, and maybe that uh, a course will have like a, a name, right? We'll just kind of start with something really simple. Um, so we'll kind of do just a Rails uh, generate. And here, actually, I'll clear this out to make this just a bit easier for everybody to see. So Rails generate, uh, and let's let's generate a, a model. Uh, and our model is going to have a couple of attributes on it. Um, I think the first thing that we'll probably add, it, it, yeah, uh, we'll call it uh, generate. We don't need a capital there. Model, we'll call it a course, and we'll make sure that the name is a string. And um, I'm trying to think what else we should add. Maybe a description. And uh, we'll make the description uh, text. Or no, we'll, we'll do we'll do something fancy we're going to make it rich text that's what we're going to do um and we'll go ahead and call that good i think that's a good place to start so now uh, we've actually got if i uh go ahead and take a look here at our visual studio code project and i just go and refresh this bad boy we've actually got a new model now we've got a model called course and it has a, some rich text it's a description um, and we've even got a, what we call a migration in rails uh, and this is something that you'll see in much larger projects we've actually got a table that we're going to create called courses and we're going to add a string column called name we're going to add some timestamps to it as well um, now this is a migration we have not run the migration if i go back to my a uh, little database here. I actually don't have anything here. Uh, it doesn't exist yet because I have not migrated the database. So if I run Rails DB migrate, this is actually going to migrate the database for me. Uh, and so now it's got it's created a table called courses. So if I refresh this, we now have courses and we have a column with name and created at. So you can even take a look here. Uh, that name is just a, a variable character. Now you notice that there's no column for the description that we added. So that's a little weird. And I want to bring up, it's not actually weird. I know why that's the case. And we'll, we'll talk about it in just a moment. But we're going to start kind of talking a little bit about databases and relationships and kind of how things relate to each other. Uh, but if we go ahead and actually type in Rails console, we can write some some interactive Ruby here. This is this is kind of cool. So we can actually create a course uh, before we kind of start anything. We can say, uh, you know, maybe course equals and let's create a new course. So let's say uh, course new and let's give it a name uh, and our name will be uh you know uh learning stuff right because we're, we're super creative we're, we're, we're really we're, we're trying to capture all the students here learning stuff big big deal uh and you'll notice that we've got this now course object uh i can actually type in course.name we can find the name of our course uh i could do um but really, I can't do much, right? So if I go back to our database and I just kind of look at our, our data here, you'll notice that it, it's not it's not there yet. Uh, we haven't actually saved this course. So if I call course.save, you'll notice this has gone ahead and actually inserted this particular course into the database, right? We've actually gone, we generated a whole insert statement that's kind of blocked out and everything kind of returns the ID. And so I actually have this now. So I could type in course.id and it even gives me the ID of the primary comp, right? This is our primary key here in our database of ID. Uh, we can update stuff. So I can say like, you know, oops, source uh, course name. And maybe I can change the name to, uh, oh, and yeah, if anybody does not have their ID set up, by all means, but, uh, please uh, stop me. Maybe throw stuff into chat. Um, I realize I'm going really fast into this, um, but my goal is to have something on the internet for you guys to fiddle with and kind of see how I built it, um, kind of, you know, commit style. Uh, so if you guys get kind of stuck, by all means, throw something into the chat or, or throw it into uh, 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 into Discord and, and we'll take a look. But uh, I'll go ahead and just start with a, kind of changing our course name, because once again, I just kind of want to demo what this whole CRUD mechanism is. So we can say, you know, something else is going to be our course name. We can go ahead and call course.save uh, and that'll actually go ahead and update our course name. And now in our database, bam, we've got something else. As our very simple, very simple course date. Uh, we can also destroy our course as well. So we can go ahead and delete this if we don't, maybe we don't like this course. Um, so we'll just go ahead and call destroy on it, right? And then bam, we've actually gone ahead and generated a whole delete statement, right? This is this is the big benefit of using something like a framework. Um, you have a whole bunch of kind of really simple methods that you can call on top of the objects that are already 
inside your, your application. But I want to bring up, we don't have any like UI for this at all. So if I type in exit, and we exit Rails console here. You can also use control C, you can use uh, exit, quit, um, pretty much anything will get you out of that Rails, Rails console. Um, you know, we don't actually have a way to interact with our courses yet. So it's a little weird, you know, um, we don't really have anything. I mean, this is cool. We've got a database. We've got stuff that's stored. We can kind of manipulate it, but we can't really do anything else with it. So, you know, maybe that's kind of the next step. Um, so I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll commit these changes that we have pending so far. Um, so we've got a change to our schema. We've got a course model. We've got a migration. We've got some test fixtures, stuff like that. And we'll go ahead and, uh, yeah. Commit. Um, adding the course. Cool. All right. So uh, we now have something, right? We have a handful of things that kind of work, um, but we don't really have any UI to manipulate these courses at all, right? So let's 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 fix that. That'll be kind of the next thing. Uh, and if we once again use Rails uh, generate, I see that we've got a couple of things that we can do here. One of the things I'm going to focus on here is this scaffold controller, because um, we just generated a model, but we kind of want to generate a whole bunch of methods. We want we want to make it pretty easy to, for us to create courses. We want to kind of mess around with some stuff and, and create courses. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's uh, you know Rails generate scaffold controller and. Because I don't really know what the arguments are off the top of my head. I'm just going to dash dash help quick. Uh, and this will kind of tell us a whole bunch of stuff that we can provide to it. Um, so it's just got a, oh, and actually, generate is not a method in Rails. It's going to be generate. Uh, and there we go. That looks a lot, that looks a bit better. This looks like the thing I'm looking for. So Rails generates scaffold controller, and it's got the name, and it's even got like field types and stuff that I can add. Um, so it looks like it's going to use Active Record, and I think it'll just kind of create some seven restful actions. So yeah, let's go ahead and try that. So Rails uh, generate scaffold controller and then we would want this to tie into our course right so just that big course and then we'll go ahead and hit enter and what this has gone ahead and done is it's actually created a whole bunch of views for us uh it actually added a, a new resource route uh into our our routes uh and it's also gone ahead and added some tests and added looks like um some json builder so we even have objects to kind of manipulate if we want to in the api so i can go ahead and just refresh this guy we can take a look at what got created so i've actually got now uh a view for our courses so we can kind of take a look at uh you know we've got like an index view um where it'll render our courses here if we go to course it looks like it will link directly to the course if we go to our form uh, it looks like there's nothing in the form at the moment apart from some actions, but that's okay. We can kind of add stuff as we go. Um, and you know what? It might actually be worth it because it looks like it didn't give us any inputs for the actual course. Like I'm not seeing any inputs here, but that's okay. We'll kind of type that stuff and kind of fiddle with it ourselves. So uh, now we can actually Rails server. Right. And if we go back here, once again, this is our, our little website. Well, we've got, if we take a look here, we can go to our, our kind of config and routes. And, oh, I don't yet see a route for us to manipulate. So maybe we can do resources, courses. And I think that should probably work. And what this is, this routes file is what defines the URLs that we're going to be able to manipulate. So if I go here and go to courses, this should match and route directly to this courses controller that we generated a whole bunch of code for. So we'll kind of see if this works. And oh, hey, look at that. We've actually got a, a nice big course. Uh, we can actually go ahead and this is these are our courses. I don't know why this just says course, but that's okay. We can actually create a new course. Uh, and we can even, if we're just watching the logs here, uh, we can go ahead and maybe create a new course. And it actually inserted into our courses uh, an empty name. Of course, we don't have a whole lot of content in there, but we can actually go ahead and, you know, destroy this course, it looks like. Uh, and this should actually kind of follow along. And it's even got, yeah, a little like delete from courses. So this stuff works. This is kind of neat. Um, 
we've actually got like a full blown create, read, update, delete kind of going right off the bat. Um, something that we probably want to do though, we probably want to do a bit more than just like create an empty course. Um, so like if we go here to courses new, I, I kind of want to see more than just a button to create a course. I kind of want to like interact with the course. So let's, let's fix that. Uh, we can actually go ahead and take a look at our course form. You'll see that we've got these little like underscore, these are partials, these are reused in Rails. So that means like this form is the same form that's on edit as on new. So let's go ahead and edit our little form here. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll add, I don't know, something. We'll, we'll maybe do uh, probably in, we'll just do it. We'll wrap this in a little div here and we'll say class. And I'm using bootstrap. So this is just really easy for me to just kind of style and just kind of call it good. Um, but we're going to start with a, um, a label probably. And we'll say for, um, Actually, it might be easiest if we use Rails defaults. So let's let's go ahead and do that. So we've actually got, uh, this is just within our form. So we're actually inside, this is embedded Ruby. So this is an ERB file. This is embedded Ruby. We can actually go ahead and take like form. Uh, and in this case, our, our label is actually gonna be for um, our name and our form text field will also be for our name. And we probably want to do a class form label I'm trying to remember what uh what bootstrap uses but if we go ahead and refresh this page now we should see uh oh here we go we got a, a nice name input and so we can actually go ahead and give this guy a, a you know some course that i made up we'll call this call this something very very dumb uh we can go ahead and create this course and we'll notice that we get a forbidden attributes error right off the bat well error messages are good we know that we got an error uh, you know, it's kind of important for us to see what the error message is, but it tells us exactly where this was created. So if you notice, it's an app controllers courses controller on line 24. So if we actually go to controllers courses controller line 24, we'll look at, we've got this little course new course params. And what you really want to follow is this little course params function. So if we actually just find this guy and see where it's defined, it's right down here. We're looking for some strong parameters. Uh, so one of the reasons why we're going to run into an error is because we need to allow name to be in here. And I think that'll be actually we might even just do this. And now let's go ahead and go back and let's, oops, I suppose we don't need the, the actual hash there. And we'll actually just go ahead and refresh this bad boy new course some course that I made up and we'll go ahead and create it. Oh, and actually I'm still getting it. So maybe we'll do this. And we'll allow name to be something that we, that we submit along with the course. So uh, some course that I made up and we'll go ahead and create that course and bam. So now we've actually got it, but I want to bring up, we don't have any content. We're looking at this course and we actually don't, see anything besides this weird like show this course button so if we actually go to show here show.html.erb we're actually rendering the course uh, so we probably don't need that and we can maybe just show the name so we can kind of render out the course name and this is erb once again so we actually have uh you know course and we can put this inside of some tags. So we can maybe do like a, a, an H1 tag because we're just looking at an individual. Well, yeah, it's gonna be a little weird. Let's instead, going back to our show. Once again, that's the, the show endpoint is the one that we're currently looking at. Instead of rendering a course, let's actually go ahead and just have our at course name. And we'll put this inside of maybe some H1 tags just to make this really big and make it pretty clear that we're on this particular course, right? I can go ahead and save it and some course that I made up, right? So we can even edit this and we can say, Jared's really lame Rails course. Ah, oh, not that. I don't want to save that. Go ahead and hit save. There we go. Really lame Rails course. Bam. Uh, for those of you that are, you know, slowly tagging along, um, 
hopefully this is something relatively simple for you guys to kind of look at. I realize this is not necessarily super exciting. So maybe we'll kind of do something more interesting, right? One of the other uh, features that we have that we've actually kind of got in Rails that's kind of ready to go, like right off the bat, is we have something called uh, active text. So if we do active text, action, action text, I mean, I'm sorry, action text. You'll see that inside action text here, we actually have a couple of really, really interesting ways of creating rich text content. So we actually have this already. And I'm just gonna be really lazy and kind of copy and paste some code here, which is like exactly what you're never supposed to do. Um, but we'll go ahead and do it anyway, right? So we're gonna go ahead and add uh, some rich text, like a rich text area, stuff for us to kind of edit. And then I'll, this is also called description, not content, right? We actually named this when we created our model. If you guys remember uh, in our course here, we actually have description. This is the, the name of our, our column. So we'll go ahead and just make sure it's description for both. And then we probably want to render this most likely on that show page. So we can actually kind of just grab this message content and throw this guy right down here. And we'll go ahead and hit save. And we'll go ahead and refresh our page. Well, actually, let's go to edit. So here's our rich text, right? So we can actually fill this with stuff. Um, kind of neat, right? It's kind of got like attachments. It's got bolding stuff. It's got all kinds of neat. Well, I'm going to use a, let's do bacon ipsum. Let's use something that allows us to uh, generate some funky text, right? Uh, we want some meat and filler. Uh, so here we go. We got some, some nice placeholder content, bacon ipsum for the win. Um, and we'll go ahead and make this seem like we, uh, you know, we really had this guy going on. We, you know, we're well organized. We've got, we've got, we've got real code. Um, and bam, go ahead and update this course. And you'll notice we get an error. Uh, you know, we have an undefined method content um, because we actually called it description, not content. So, um, so let me go back, copy this back to our show page and this is actually going to be description and we'll go ahead and refresh this and i've lost all of my bacon ipsum oh no but i did want to show a lesson that we were about to learn very very painfully if i go ahead and copy this and i actually put this in and we try to update the course we're actually going to be missing some stuff and i realize this is a little weird we've got oh it's not at message it's at course Oops, there we go. Uh, if we go ahead and refresh this though, uh, we update the course, we don't get any of this content. And one of the reasons why we're not getting any of this content is because Rails has by default strong parameters. So if we don't allow description to be sent with our request, so back in here, we have this permit name, we also have to allow description to be sent. That's the only way we're actually gonna be able to send this stuff. So if I go back here, let's go ahead and try updating this course again. Now it saves correctly. Uh, so this is just a really simple way of keeping things secure uh, in Rails. It's just a really, really nice way of making sure that we don't screw up too badly. Uh, and we can also add things like images, right? So I can go ahead and, you know, once again, everything in here is horribly, horribly misspelled, but we can go ahead and let's, uh, in my downloads folder, I think I got, ooh, I got a graduation cap uh, in a PNG file. Oh, there we go. I'm thinking that looks pretty cool. Some cool education logo. All right, we'll go ahead and update our course. And you'll notice right now this is a little bit broken and it's mostly just because I think I need to actually install the pieces that I need to get this to work. You'll notice that some of these messages are a little verbose, but uh, all the pieces are there for us to actually upload and save. Uh, a whole lot of different objects. So we've actually got a little like active storage representation. Maybe if I refresh this, it'll show up correctly. No, oh. rails. But we might just have images broken at least temporarily here while I try to get some of that stuff working. Um, that's okay though, not super worried. Once again, I don't normally run this on, on Windows. So uh, it's a little, little weird, but we can still control and manage some of this stuff from the CLI. So if I actually, Rails console here, we can actually destroy this, this particular course. So I can go course and you'll notice that the ID up here is actually just in our URL, it's course ID number three. So we can say equals course find number three, right? And then we can go ahead and destroy it. So course destroy. And it goes ahead and it destroys 
everything that we had. And if we go ahead and now run Rails uh, server, right? This actually has our very simple CRUD application that we have in here. If I go back to courses, you'll notice that there are no courses. Uh, this is empty by default. So you can kind of see all little pieces that kind of go into this. Uh, it's pretty, pretty simple. Yeah. If anybody has any questions by all means, fire away, please throw them into the chat, but I'm just kind of hacking away at, uh, you know, creating a really simple, uh, like painfully simple CRUD application. Um, you know, so this is some course content, right? Um, you know, there's a lot more you can add to Rails. Obviously we could turn this into like a user, we could add like user authentication, we could add password management, we could add uh, like, you know, signing up for classes, we could have different relationships kind of set up. Um, Cause one of the things that, that's going on, how we're actually able to make some of this rich text, if I just kind of go back in here and, and paste this and I go ahead and create this course again. Uh, if I actually go into our, uh, table plus instance, we have our, our ID. This is some course content. This is this particular record that's up here. Um, and where we're creating this, you'll notice that there's no column here for like all of this text that we wrote. Uh, this is actually being saved in a different table. Um, so it's actually being stored in action text, rich texts. And you'll notice here that if I go ahead and maybe uh, do like a quick look at it, or you can see that it's actually HTML encoded. We Rails takes care of kind of parsing the HTML and saving it to the database uh, and making sure that certain tags can't be used. So for instance, like you can't insert a script tag in here. Uh, it just doesn't work. Um, but this allows us to kind of track and create a whole lot of this content. We can go ahead and edit this kind of whenever we want without having to create a new record. So I can go ahead and edit this course and then say, you know, um, we've been hacking with Rails. Go ahead and update the course. And then like magic, if I go ahead and refresh this guy, we can actually take a look here, right at the bottom. We've been hacking with Rails, right? Uh, that's kind of how this works. It's a full-blown uh, create, read, update, delete application. It's real simple. There's not a lot of magic going on here. Um, you know, we've kind of got a really goofy looking website. If we go back to the homepage, I mean, this just looks really weird. So uh, I'm gonna cheat real fast. I'm gonna make this look like really, the, the homepage, I'm gonna make it look like kind of good. Um, I'm gonna just gonna go to bootstrap. We'll just go to get bootstrap here uh, and they've actually got a couple of examples and I'm just going to copy and paste from, from some of their, some of their code. Cause it, let's make a nice looking app and then we'll just kind of, um, you know, run wild with it. So all I'm doing here is I just literally opened it up and it's already inside of this kind of container. Um, and here's our, yeah. So, you know what, I think I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to go into our homepage. Uh, uh, you know what? We're going to put this on every page. I think that's going to be smarter. I think smarter is debatable. Um, and we'll actually move this little header outside of that. There we go. And we'll go ahead and save this. And now if I go ahead and refresh my homepage, we should have a nice top bar. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, we have this like goofy SVG for bootstrap, but you know what? We've kind of got our own little icon. It's going to be our graduation cap. So I'm going to use I class and we have font awesome already installed. So I'm going to try using font awesome. Um, and we're going to use that graduation cap icon because I kind of already set that up. Oh, icons and free and graduation cap. Hey, there we go. And we can just... There we go. I'm lazy, so I'm just going to copy this. Uh, let's go ahead and save it, and let's see what what this looks like. We should have a nice little graduation cap. Oh, look at that, man! Whew. It's like we it's like we actually did something fancy. Um, but the you know we have the rest of this content that looks kind of goofy. But if we go now to our like courses page, we've still got that header, right? Still looks pretty good. Um, and I do kind of want to fix one thing too. When we go to our index page, we don't need to render this notice all the time. So I think we can do if notice and then, end. and that's just a really simple way of kind of writing some Ruby code, right? We could just write embedded Ruby. That's what ERB stands for, embedded Ruby. Uh, and so now when we actually refresh this courses page, we won't see that unless there is a notice. Um, 
And then we can even, you know, we have this render courses mechanism. So if we go to course, it's actually just rendering a list of these. So we can actually go ahead and maybe add like uh, an H2 tag with the name of our course. So we could say course name and just do something like that. Once again, just styling this a little bit. Uh, and we refresh this. Now you can see we've got some, this is some course content. Um, but this is a little weird. It looks a little awkward. Once again, we have bootstrap. So we can kind of do some maybe more interesting things with this. Uh, we could probably, instead of using headers, we can maybe do like a, uh, ooh, like a, an album layout or a pricing layout. Um, well, let, maybe actually before we even get that far, let me stick with the homepage. Let's, uh, let's, let's make the homepage look good. Let's add some hero content. Um, yeah, we'll do this nice big centered hero. I like this. Uh, and we'll go ahead and copy our outer HTML. Let's just throw this guy right in there. Um, kind of move this over, save it. Let's see what it looks like, right? If we go back to our homepage. We've got a centered hero that looks pretty cool. Um, uh, we will need though to probably replace our image that's on here. You know what? Oh, we still have our graduation cap. You know what we could use? We can use Font Awesome for that. We'll just make this really big, right? And I think uh, FA5X, I think we'll do that. Just, just total guess, I don't really remember. Hey, look at that, it's a centered hero. Man, this looks, this is looking pretty good. Uh, we can even keep going. We can actually add, you know, the next stage of our of our app. Well, let's say we got some features. Um, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and once again, I'm going to copy this. Like, why not? Um, copy some outer HTML. Man, copy and paste is great. Let me tell you, this is this is this is almost exhausting. But this is perfect for a hackathon because the content isn't necessarily super important, right? Um, at least not while it's a placeholder. So we can go here, take a look. Oh, that looks pretty interesting doesn't look as good but i think it's because we're missing icons so let me go ahead and grab this little icon again and let's replace these little svgs in here uh you know we're going to get rid of the 5x maybe just do 2x and we'll just copy and paste that in a couple of places right and then we don't really need to worry too much about it, it just kind of kind of works uh yeah cool Save that, refresh. And that still looks a little goofy looking at their little features thing. I think they somehow have this stretched out in a way that I do not, but you get the idea. Uh, there's not really a whole lot of hard stuff to add in here. So if we take a look here, this little, yeah, we probably don't need to worry too much about that. In fact, to be honest with you, we can probably just get rid of the icons. I think that might be the simpler, simpler play here. But you can see how easy it is to make a kind of nice looking little site, right? Um, it's not really all that hard. Uh, we can even keep going, right? Of course we can add, uh, you know, I don't know what else we would add, maybe a footer of some kind, but we've got this. We can now actually make uh, maybe working navigation. So we can kind of do uh, in our home here, href just slash, and we'll call this one maybe courses. And this will go to slash courses. And we can leave the rest of these blank because we don't use them. And go ahead and save. We also don't have a search bar, but you know, that's all right. So now if we go to courses, it takes us to courses. We go to home, it takes us home. Kind of cool. Nice and simple. Any questions at all? Anybody kind of staring at this going like, what is going on? Um, you know, this is this is the really, really basic version of, of making a web app. This is kind of how you start. Um, we can even go into kind of styling some stuff if you'd like. We can kind of talk a bit about like, uh, you know, how you would do, we could have something like an album here. So like these like little thumbnails and albums, we can kind of copy some of this stuff. So we could take this and maybe say, okay, so our, our card here, um, you know, we'll just kind of copy this, this outer HTML and we will replace our individual courses with that. So we'll just go ahead and do this real fast and we can do, you know, and this is just once again a total placeholder card image. Um, but you know, we can add a uh, if we have do we have the text for the thumbnail. So in here, we can turn this into maybe the uh, you know course name. 
right? And then maybe we have view and edit. So this could be our, our link to, so we can kind of do that, right? Um, not necessarily that this will work super well, but it should work just fine. Um, so we're on show this, maybe edit this course, show and edit course, edit path course, something like that. Now real rocket science, pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, and probably do view and edit again, view and edit. I think that's the course edit path. I think that should work. Um, but honestly, I don't really remember and we can kind of just copy these, these little things, uh, and paste them in here. So, yeah. And yeah, we could add like something like reading time for the length of particular courses. But now if we go back here and we refresh this, we should see, oh, we see an error, uh, course edit path. Oh, just course path. I think that should work. Um, but we can find out the available paths to us if we really need to. We can go ahead and kill this and do rails routes. And this should give us everything that we can navigate to. So we actually have a uh, new course edit course is actually the name of it. So it's edit course path. And we'll actually just go ahead and keep rolling. Keep rolling. Uh, once again, not a lot of magic. Well, I guess maybe it's all magic to somebody, but uh, you can now see we've got some course content. It's not centered. It looks a little goofy, but um, we can kind of remove this additional stuff as long as these these little buttons work. So that goes back, back to courses. Go to edit, back to courses. That seems to work. So we can remove this. Go ahead and save it and refresh. And now we can actually maybe add, add a couple other courses, right? So we can say like some, this is some course content and do another bacon ipsum, but just with maybe two paragraphs instead, right? Um, and this is, this is Rails in a nutshell. We can go ahead and create this course. Let's go back to courses and you can see we've got, oh, I called it the exact same thing. And we haven't actually replaced our, uh, our content that comes in here. So we might wanna consider doing that. We can view this course, we can go back to courses. Uh, we can edit this course. We can say something else. And if we go back to courses, you can see it says something else. This is some course content. So we've got stuff that actually kind of kind of works. Uh, it's not perfect, of course, but it is there. Uh, and we can even, if we want to, um, throw this into kind of a row style. So we can actually do this and say, okay, so for every course, you know, we'll have a, a row and we'll actually just copy this whole class and we go to index and inside of this courses list, we can actually go ahead and say uh, class is that, and this should turn it into a nice grid uh, and we should now have a grid of cards. And it kind of, I mean, once again, it looks really goofy. It doesn't necessarily work super well because um, our, our thumbnail or we probably shouldn't be doing what we're doing to render that little thumbnail piece, uh, but you can get started uh, just with something like this. Uh, this is a, a great place to start. Um, and now that we have all of this, we can actually commit all of it. So I can go in and uh, let me just grab pretty much everything. Let me just go ahead and refresh this actually while I've got this going. Um, we can go ahead and add all of our changes and I'm gonna leave out any bin changes, but I'm actually just gonna go ahead and push this up to Heroku and let you guys kind of play around with it because we are approaching the end of this particular uh, demonstration uh, it's kind of really really simple there's not a whole lot of uh not a whole lot else for me to show you um kind of all of this is how rails works how you can scaffold web apps super fast for hackathon style projects we can uh you know uh go ahead and push this to the internet i suppose uh, and kind of let the world have at it and destroy my, my my poor little app um you know add some course management and content um and get push and so now uh, here in our little little hackathon project, if you want to, I want to bring up the, the simplest way now, if you guys just want to deploy this, you can actually just go ahead and use this deploy to Heroku button. Um, this whole thing is kind of set up to deploy right off the bat. If you click deploy to Heroku, this is going to take you to Heroku. Uh, it's already set up. Uh, Heroku is totally free for uh, 
at least an app of this size, because this isn't particularly complicated. But we've already got a couple of environment variables set up, and it's going to connect Postgres for us uh, on Heroku. So we'll actually get Heroku set up uh, once again for free. This doesn't cost any money. We can go ahead and hit deploy app here. Uh, and what it's going to do is it's going to configure the environment. It's going to build the app for us. It's going to run a couple of scripts uh, to kind of scale up and, and make sure that the dynos work. Um, and then we're going to be able to manipulate and kind of visit our little website online. Um, yeah, real, real simple. So if you haven't considered it yet, I uh, definitely would encourage you to try scaffolding an app, uh, scaffolding a web app. At the very least, just try clicking that, that, that push, that deploy to Heroku button on my repo, uh, sign up for a Heroku account, and then actually have a, a built web app. But maybe I should not get ahead of myself. We'll see if this builds successfully first. But yeah, any questions at all, uh, fire away. Uh, so far, I haven't heard from anybody. So I feel like I'm just kind of talking into the void. I hope I'm still online. Oh, how this is simple. Sorry. <laughs> it is, uh, it seems, uh, honestly, I, I kind of learned Rails in like a, like a weekend. Like Rails is like really, really easy uh, to learn and understand. I want to bring up that basically all we're doing is running Rails generator commands, right? So just like Rails G model something, right? Uh, Rails G scaffold controller something, right? All we're doing is scaffolding an app. We've written painfully, painfully little code here. Uh, if you guys have been paying attention, um, I really haven't written that much apart from like copying and pasting stuff from Bootstrap. Uh, most of what I've written today is actually in HTML. <laughs> um, so it, it is a, a, something that doesn't take particularly long. I want to bring up that most MVC frameworks are kind of all the same. So once you've learned one, you, you really do have a pretty good grasp on the others. Uh, and we can kind of talk a little bit about that if you're curious. Um, but we can actually, uh, maybe I should... Uh, um, just go ahead and take a look at our app. Maybe that, that'll be the simpler thing to kind of look at. We've actually got our, our running app. We've just deployed it. We can go ahead and open this and uh, you'll see, oh man, it's on the internet, peeps. And uh, we will post a recording of this afterwards. Um, so I'll go ahead and throw this into the, into the chat um, and throw this down here too, in case anybody really wants to check it out. Um, so this is just a random random URL generated herokuapp.com. We can change it, of course. Um, but anybody can go in here and go to courses and create a course. Uh, try not to type in anything too inappropriate. Um, but, you know, some course that I made up. As soon as I said that, man, people are going to put horrible, horrible things on here. But it's still fun. And I still enjoy doing this. So we can go ahead and create this course. And now we've got a whole list of courses. So some people have gone and created courses. Look at this. This is a course. Uh, if we go to view this one, this is a course you've got E, um, but you get the idea. Uh, if create, so we can actually, uh, I can, I won't delete yours. I'll delete mine. Okay. Um, so we can actually show this course so we could just go ahead and destroy it. And then bam, that course was successfully destroyed. Nerd stuff, nerd stuff. So once again, all we really did today was run rails generators. Uh, so all we had to do was get rails installed. And then we can just start generating stuff. And if anybody's really curious, Heroku has a spectacularly good guide uh, on how to do that. We can actually go ahead and, and kind of look at a whole lot of different things here in Heroku. We can take a look at uh, like our metrics. Uh, oh, I guess we're not actually running the app yet at the moment. Uh, we're not paying for it, so they're not going to give us metrics. That's okay. Um, but you can kind of see what we've got as in terms of resources. So we've actually got like Postgres attached. Um, you know, we can go ahead and we can, and once again, I'm not really too concerned about the security of this particular app because it's just a demo goofy app. Uh, but we've got 10 rows uh, of the 10,000 free rows that were given. I am paying exactly $0 for this entire application. Uh, the total amount is $0. It's free to host. Uh, and that's pretty awesome, uh, especially for a hackathon. And it allows you to have a, a database with relational data in it, right? So we can actually go ahead, uh, like for instance, with this database, I can view my credentials and we can actually go ahead and connect to this. So I can go ahead and copy this. Oh, I don't need Postman. It's not what I intended to open, but we can actually go ahead and connect to a different database. So let's uh, let's do that. If I can remember how to connect to a different database. Maybe we can close that connection and add a new one. I, don't, I do not remember. Oh, here we go. File. Uh, connection. Here we go. New connection. Let's create a new connection from a URL. And just so happens that I have, oops, you know what? Let's, let's test it. Nope. 
That's not a thing. We will cancel that. Let's try creating a new connection from a URL, but let's actually clear this, this content here and paste it. There we go. And we'll test that. There we go. So you can see we've got this uh, kind of courses content. Oh, and let me save that. And there we go. We've got some courses content. You can see people have typed stuff in. They said, hello, right? Uh, you kind of got all kinds of stuff. We can see all of that when we refresh the page. So here's hello, right? Hi. Hi. <laughs> so yeah, uh, once again, I got two minutes to spare. So that's uh, that's that's the, the, the long and short of scaffolding a Rails app very, very quickly. And uh, I want to bring up that MVC frameworks like Rails, like you know Rails, Django, Laravel, they, once you've learned one, you have you have learned most of them. Um, it's pretty easy to pick up another MVC framework. So like, for instance, I actually started with Laravel. Rails is not the first thing that I did development with. I've been now doing professional development with Rails for maybe four years, maybe five. Um, but I started with Laravel and I would focused on doing Laravel development for the better part of, I don't know, maybe two or two or three years. And then I kind of just graduated into doing Rails. So yeah, and we will post a recording of this after. Uh, I do not know what the URL is. I'm hoping that uh, this was not too fast and too much for everybody, uh, but I was kind of just rapidly scrambling to uh, to put together my, my Rails app and, and kind of get it deployed. So yeah, yeah. And my dog has been very, very patient. This is Champ. Hey, everybody. He's been very patiently sitting here trying to figure out what the heck we've been doing uh, this whole time. He's just very confused. Rails is not dog treats, so he doesn't pay much attention to it. So yeah. If anybody has anything else, by all means, uh, please do fire away. We've got tons and tons of resources uh, for, for hackathons uh, just on the general internet. Um, but, oh, uh, when I had errors, how did I instantly know what went wrong? Um, well, for the most part, the errors actually kind of explained what I was doing wrong. I realized that we have a whole bunch of logs here in this particular file. But like, for instance, a great example is this error that we ran into. Uh, right at the beginning, it just says this, this file, like it, we had a file that, that didn't exist. So like I did, I'm missing lib FFI, right? Um, how am I missing lib FFI? I don't know, uh, but it's just a very simple load error that was going on here. So I just was like, oh, and this is when we were loading in images. I want to bring up that images work here. So if we go to edit this particular course content, like this is a course, right? This didn't work in my local machine, but it should work just fine here. Uh, if I go to like my downloads folder and I use this little PNG that I load in here, you know, we can go ahead and update this course. Uh, and it still, still is broken, unfortunately, it looks like. Um, you know, we're loading it to the local file system. It looks like it's just causing a problem on, on Heroku. Um, so like, you know, some stuff was just broken for my demo, but in terms of errors and kind of knowing what was going on, I did intend for there to be a couple of errors while I was demonstrating stuff. So um, when it comes to errors, it's just a matter of knowing what a stack trace is, because it's going to be very, very similar in any language, right? So when you have a stack trace, it's going to be just a list of all of the functions that were called that led to that error, right? So like this, these are a whole lot of library code. Oh, I actually just lost my place. So if I go back here, this is a great example. It's just a load error here. But what it's telling me is these are all of the functions that it was calling, right? And immediately, as soon as I looked at this, I was like, oh, FFI is missing, right? I'm missing a, a very specific library. Um, so it cannot open a shared object file, no such file or directory. It's this particular lib FFI. Um, so like, it's just a matter of knowing kind of what right off the bat you're running into. Um, in terms of reading a stack trace, I want to bring it. Once you can read stack traces in one language or any kind of C style language, you will very quickly be able to read stack traces in any other language. Uh, it seems like magic. It seems like somebody just kind of knows stuff, but once you've run into enough errors, the errors start to get repetitive. You start to realize that, you know, the errors that you encounter on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, especially as, because once again, I use Rails uh, every day. Um, you just kind of, you, you, the errors don't change. It's the people that change. Uh, the errors tend to stay the same. Yeah. Any other questions? By all means, please fire away. Otherwise, uh, yeah, we have wrapped up. I, I believe uh, I only had an hour to present. So I <laughs> was uh, uh, very, very rapidly just kind of, uh, Scrambling. Um, my dog is a uh, cattle dog. He is an Australian blue healer. He is a, uh, yeah, 
He's 18 years old. He is a, a very, very literal geezer. Um, 18 years old is very old for a dog. So he's mostly blind. has no idea what's going on. Right, champ? Yeah, buddy. Uh, and if anybody's looking for personal apps that they've actually made and, and messed around with, uh, I actually do uh, like, you know, for instance, I used Rails to scaffold this very simple uh, beer brewing application. Uh, I brew beer as a hobby. And so in order to track it, I kind of decided that I was going to uh, use Rails on my own time. And this is Champ, once again, on my little website. This is rotatoripa.co. And we actually, you know, brew beer. And so once again, we've got like a, you know, it's, it's a very, very simple website. We've actually got, you know, like charts and graphs and stuff like that. This is stuff that's really easy to scaffold. Uh, I made this in less than a weekend in about maybe three hours instead of one. Um, so give it enough time. This is what I would have built, right? I would have built something very similar to this. Um, you really can do a lot in a weekend if you have the right tools in your toolbox. Uh, and I want to bring up that you're here at a hackathon. You're here at Hack NC. I'm hoping that you're having a boatload of fun. And I'm hoping that, uh, you know, your, your hacks are, are hopefully going well and being successful and that you're able to kind of demonstrate and, and, and show your own abilities, right? I, I kind of want to see what you guys build. I'm really excited for tomorrow when you guys get to presentation time. Uh, John Deere is having uh, a hack, of course, if you haven't considered trying to make a game relating to agriculture in some way, shape, or form, you definitely should if you haven't started already on your hacking project. Uh, if you go to the, the sponsor, uh, the, the, basically the general announcements channel uh, in the attendees area, you can see a bit more about our challenge. Amar posted something in there. Um, but yeah, with that, uh, thank you everybody for joining me. Uh, I hope you had a, a bit of fun. I hope uh, everybody kind of stayed out of trouble or got into it. Um, but I'll, I'll hang around for a few minutes if anybody has any other questions. Otherwise, please do reach out on Discord. Uh, definitely willing to help you guys out as you're, uh, you're, you're scrambling to put together your projects uh, over, the course of, uh, over the course of a weekend here. Um, and I'm here to answer any and all questions that you have. I've got a, quite, a bit of, quite a bit of web development experience, but I also have a lot of game development experience as well. So I've definitely made games in Unity and Unreal uh, I've made some games using Godot, which is an open source game engine. Uh, and then, of course, I've got a lot of experience with Rails. I've used Django in a whole bunch of different projects. I can literally write React in my sleep. It's literally something that haunts me. Um, and then, of course, uh, anything with Go, Rust, those are also languages that I, I've used, not necessarily super familiar with, but definitely have used in the past. Uh, yeah. With that, uh, once again, I'm Jared. I work at John Deere. I'm hoping that uh, you guys are, yeah, having fun at the hackathon. And I'm sure Amelia is just like staring, just going like, what is going on? Like, ugh.